Jeremy Kaufman is back. He's the CEO of Library, which owns Odyssey, which is one of the platforms that I'm on. And I I haven't been booted yet. So I have to say, so far, you guys have stuck by the free speech promise. New White House press secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre's partner, is a CNN correspondent. <laughs> of course. <laughs> And uh, it's raising questions, this is the Daily Caller, about a possible conflict of interest. I guess it's national CNN's national correspondent, Suzanne Malvo, who I, I, I've seen many times on there, to have a kid together. Uh, she will be the first black and only lesbian and openly lesbian White House press secretary in history. She has previously worked on the Biden and Obama presidential campaigns and was an N MSNBC and NBC political analyst. I mean, I don't know. I guess my initial reaction to this is like, I guess I'm not surprised. Um, I'm probably, I would probably be more concerned about her background and who she is in her position than the fact that she's, uh, I don't know if she's officially married or what, but you know, she, she's in a relationship with somebody who works at CNN. I, I don't know. What do you think, Jeremy? I, they're already in bed together. So it's like, to me, I don't, the fact that it's explicit, like I don't, I don't care that much because it's already obvious to me. And I mean, I didn't even mean in, I didn't mean in bed together in a little sense. Um, uh, yeah, but of course I was like, no pun intended. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but so it's it's like I, I don't know. This one, th th <laughs> like this one, doesn't bother me only because it's like completely what I would expect. You know, like all right. So what if she wasn't? Would anything be different? No, mm -hmm. of course it wouldn't. Like I mean, mm -hmm. CNN is might as well be state affiliated media of the United States. I mean, it's not, it's not an independent news organization. Yeah. Well, and CNN's uh, statement is that Suzanne Malvo will continue in her role as CNN national correspondent covering national, international news and cultural events, but will not cover politics, Capitol Hill or the white house while Corrine Jean-Pierre is serving as white house press secretary. So they're taking her off that beat. I mean, I don't know, maybe that's a step up from when they like Chris Cuomo interview his brother. They're, <laughs> they're trying to separate things a little bit there. I'm not, I don't know, but yeah, I agree with you. I, I don't think, um, I think you'd, you'd be in just as problematic a situation regardless. Um, you know, if she was like celibate and you know, I, it's, I, 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 I think it's pretty clear and, you know, kind of the way I, I look at the, you know, I guess you could look at CNN and and question them but like you said i mean we already kind of knew all this about cnn it's not really surprising from the from the government standpoint when people get all kind of messed up about these press conferences for instance where like oh i can't believe you said this to a reporter what i guess i just look at it like press conferences i expect to be a show they're total theater they're they're a performance by these politicians they're not you know it's just so funny to me hearing jen saki talking about how you know, their partners in truth, like she's going to be her partner in truth, you know, and it's like, it's, it's the total opposite. The whole point of a press secretary is to run press for the administration so that they look good. Like that's the whole point. So I, I to me, even like being a white house correspondent is almost like, I, I don't know. It's like being vice president or like bench during a baseball team. I just, I don't know. I, I guess I just look at it. Like, I know you're, it's cool. You're at the white house. You get to ask questions and stuff, but, but the real journalism doesn't happen at a white house press conference. That that's just, you're just asking a question and then getting whatever they want to tell you. There's no, there's no exchange of, of like truth in my mind there. It's, it's total theater. It should just be seen that way. So then, you know, you get less upset it, to me. It's like, if you get upset about this stuff, you're starting with the assumption that there was some kind of semblance of truth happening here. And I think you got to just cut that out. That way your expectations will be very low and then you won't get upset anymore, but at least you'll be on guard from here on out that this is not, you know, there's, this is not journalism and this is not, you know, this is not a, an exchange of truth that the administration's like, yes, we're working with journalists and we want them to all come in so that we can make sure that the American people know what's going on. We're going to be totally transparent. We're like, it's just not that at all. And I think when people get freaked out by this stuff, it's like, you're still assuming, I think something that's incorrect. I, I agree 100%. So I have like almost nothing to say in response to that. That's exactly the right way to approach it. Okay, Jeremy. Well, thank you for telling me I'm right about everything. I'll make sure I save that clip for my husband. Whether you're celebrating or totally depressed that Elon Musk is buying Twitter, both of these reactions pair nicely with a superb high altitude Malbec from Argentina. And the good news is you can get that at allisonwinepromo.com and get 50% off the wine itself and 50% off shipping. This would make for a great Mother's Day present. This trio of wines is not 
anything mom's going to get at the grocery store. And because two of them are extreme altitude wines, that means the grapes work very hard under the sun in these high remote locations. Also, if you go to allisonwinepromo.com, one of the wines uses natural fermentation, another from the oldest vineyard in Argentina. So again, very unique wines, great Mother's Day present, and a great way to support my work. But if you prefer coffee or tea, go to twininginecoffee.com slash Allison. That's twininginecoffee.com slash Allison. Choose from a wide variety of high altitude USDA certified Nicaraguan roast. There is a limited black edition right now, which is processed with honey, which is very good. There is also a Katura tea. If mom or you is a tea drinker, you can get the Katura tea, which is tea made from coffee fruit. It's a uh, tastes a lot like black tea. Actually, it's very good. And uh, I like to cold brew mine for 24 hours. You can also do a hot brew uh, either way, however you like it, whatever you're drinking, whether you're celebrating or ready to drink yourself under the table, go to allisonwinepromo.com, twininginecoffee.com slash Allison. Have a wonderful Mother's Day. And again, thank you for those of you who go to my sponsors pages and support my work through my sponsors or those of you who are supporting me on the other platforms. I'm very excited about Mother's Day because it gives me the chance to thank you for supporting me because this work allows me to be a full-time mom, which is really the greatest gift that I could get on Mother's Day. So thanks again. And let's continue on with the video. Okay, moving on to the disinformation governance board. <laughs> there, um, so first off, the first time I've I've so far seen ABC News is now using the term Orwellian. So now, is it Orwellian anymore when ABC News is using <laughs> that term? I mean, I don't I now. <laughs> so I don't. I don't. I don't even know if it can mean what it means anymore when mainstream news starts using that word. But, um, but okay, they're saying that the Homeland Security Secretary is saying they are not going to be the truth police, that they're, it was just a clumsy rollout and and people are getting it wrong and they release this fact sheet. They understand there's been confusion, but that um, it says, they say the body will not be involved in managing department operations. Uh, the group would bring together the expert throughout our department to ensure that our ongoing work in combating disinformation is done in a way that does not infringe on free speech a fundamental constitutional right embedded in the First Amendment, nor on the right of privacy or other civil rights and civil liberties. The White House on Friday pledged the board will operate in a nonpartisan and apolitical <laughs> manner. <laughs> so stupid. Because um, just the idea of it is 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 so partisan. But anyway, um, yeah. So I think you've got no idea what disinformation is, and I don't think the government is capable of it. This is uh, Rand Paul talking. Um, and then going back to the Homeland Security Secretary, the Department of Homeland Security is not going to be the truth, please. This is the farthest thing from the truth. We protect the security of the <laughs> homeland. So what are your thoughts on all that? Oh, my God. It's like I, it's I, I mean, laughter, I guess, is one of them. I mean, no one has spread more misinformation than the government. I mean, the government is I mean, we can look at uh, a bunch of stuff under covid. We can go back uh, uh, to the Iraq war, to Iran Contra, to uh, to the Gulf of Tonkin. I mean, how we can go back throughout time. We can go all the way back to the Spanish American War. Okay, um, the 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 government um, is is the United States government is probably the largest purveyor of misinformation in the entire world, uh, and so it is. I, it, there's no. I mean, and that's what they want to do. That's what this is actually about. It's about. It's another vehicle for them to be. Um, trying to enforce the agenda that they want. Of course, the notion that it will be somehow nonpartisan is ludicrous. I mean, you could get optimism from this in the sense that like, and this is one of the huge benefits of social media and why they want to control it so much is it's so much easier to expose these things in the social media era. As much as many downsides as there are from social media, the fact that these things that we're able to mock these things, we're able to discover them, that we're able to sort of form communities among people who understand what's going on um, I, that is, you know, some of the power it was clumsy of them. Um, uh, and, and so it's like, are they, and that's where I go kind of go to the next level. It's like, are they actually that inept? Is there something else going on here? You know, I don't, I don't know what the answers to those questions are. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, no, I mean, I totally have the same questions too. Like we already know that they, they're spy on us. So it's kind of like, why are they telling us? And my, my question was, is it because they're creating it so they can fund it? And then they know that if they fund it, that's going to be traceable through public records requests. So they want to get out in front of it. My other question is, isn't disinformation intentional? 
like intentionally leading propaganda and misinformation is sort of defined as like, I didn't know that I was saying that wrong. It's just, it's just wrong information. And so, so isn't disinformation specific to like exactly what you're talking about with what they do. And then I started thinking about how the number one tool they use <laughs> for that Jeremy's wiping his lens <laughs> to make sure he doesn't spread any disinformation yeah. or I don't know. Don't worry. You can't get me sick through the camera. Um, I, so I wonder if, cause they use the media as like their number one tool, like their number one mouthpiece is corporate news. I feel like to spread exactly what they're talking about. So do you know, do you think, why would they choose disinformation versus misinformation for the name of the board? And, um, yeah. And, and is that what you mean? You just kind of wonder too, why they're showing their cards on, on this one? Like, why would they tell us at all? If they already, I feel like they're already doing this stuff behind the scenes. So what, why have, a, why have a board? Yeah. That, that, the, so that second one is, is a harder question to kind of unpack. I'm not sure what the answer is in terms of disinformation versus misinformation. I mean, I mean, think the answer is disinformation is worse, right? When it's disinformation, they're, evil when it's misinformation that's just a mistake right okay um right. And, and right that's just oh i, I you know someone you know, so, and i think that's a big part of it is they want a lot of a lot of the sort of um progressive worldview in my opinion only holds together if you're kind of in an information bubble and so it's very important to be keeping people in that bubble and it's very important for them to label the information that's outside of that bubble that might cause you to question some of those beliefs as um, not just wrong, but evil, right? right? If it's just wrong, maybe you'd still look at it. But if it's evil, you know, maybe you won't look at it at all. This is just a short clip of a full video that has basically been sanitized so it can fly under the radar on YouTube. If you want to see the entire conversation that we had or the entirety of the commentary that you're watching, please go to one of my other platforms. One of the best places to go is allisonmorrow.locals.com where you can become part of my editorial board and pose questions ahead of time for interviews. And you get exclusive content, so go to allisonmorrow.locals.com. But whatever you do, don't stay here on YouTube. If you want the full truth about what's happening around us, you gotta go somewhere else.